Okay, now uh, let's uh, move on to the next algorithm, which is k-means, which is one of the most popular machine learning algorithms. So it is also an unsupervised clustering algorithm. Actually, clustering algorithms are, are just unsupervised learning. And the K stands for the number of clusters. So we define the number of clusters before running this uh, algorithm. And it is iterative in nature. So iteratively, we actually uh, reorganize the clusters. And then it converges always. So which means it has a global convergency. But only local optimum minimum is obtained. So global convergence means wherever you start, it will converge. And then it is sensitive to initialization because uh, it starts with random clustering. So every time the result might be a little different depending on your initialization. And it is sensitive to outliers. So we are going to see why this k-means algorithm is sensitive to outliers. So this slide summarizes k-means algorithms. Okay. So given an n samples, okay, and then each vector will be assigned to one cluster exclusively. Think about your uh, photos in your smartphone. You cannot put one photo into two different groups, right? So one photo will be in a one cluster, one group exclusively. And SI denotes ith cluster. So we have k clusters. And then we define the dissimilarity measure such as Euclidean distance. If you don't have any idea about your data samples, then Euclidean distance is one way to go. But if you have deep understanding of the data samples, then you can define your own dissimilarity measure. And the K means minimizes within the cluster point scatter. So this one is actually defining so within cluster point scatter. So look at this one. In this term, we are talking about ith cluster. Okay. And then in the ith cluster, we have many samples here. And then we have an average here. And this one is defining the distance between this sample and the average of that cluster. So when we have some samples in a cluster, and this is the average of this cluster, then we check the distance between all these. And we want to minimize the sum of all these distances across all the clusters. So for example, if we have some samples and uh, some samples here, and if the clustering looks like this, which is really terrible clustering, but in this case, the average of this cluster is around here, and then average of this cluster is around here. And when we check the distance between the mean of the cluster and the samples in the cluster is, in this cluster is quite small. But in this cluster, the distance is quite large, right? So if we sum all these distances, then this one is, is not a good choice. But if we have clusters like this, then the average is around here. Then when we check the distance, then uh, the distance is quite small. So when we sum them up, then the total uh, scatterness is small, so this clustering is better. Again, uh, m sub i is the mean vector of the ith cluster. And depending on the research field, some field prefer quarter book or some field prefer a centroid. Or simply just mean vector would be perfectly fine. Okay, then how can we minimize this equation? So to minimize this term, we have to reorganize the cluster. So S is actually assignment. When we have uh, five samples and S1 is a, a set, like uh, three and four, for example, and S2 is 
one, two, five, which means we have uh, two clusters. And in the first cl uh, cluster, we have a three and four. And in the second cluster, we have one to five. This is assignment, okay? So we have to check all the different kind of assignments to minimize this term. So this is a kind of error or loss. And when S is fixed at time T, which means at time T, all the samples are assigned, something like this one. So they are assigned, and then in each iteration is given by derivative set to zero. So we have this assignment, then we want to minimize this error. You know, in machine learning, uh, when we have an objective function and the, when you don't know what to do, then just to take a derivative and set it to zero. That's the first thing to do. So take a derivative and set it to zero. And if you drive this equation, then the, you will see this one. So M is simply the average of the samples in the cluster. So we are talking about the ith cluster here. So M sub i at time t plus 1 is just the average of the samples in the cluster. And in the cluster, we have assignment, right? So we know which samples are in the cluster at time t. So this one is fixed. This one is fixed. So we know uh, which samples are in this cluster. And we just take sum and divide this sum by uh, this cardinality, which means the number of samples. In this example, the cardinality of S1 is 2. Cardinality of uh, S2 is 3. So it's just as simply the number of samples in the set. Okay, so now let's talk about actual algorithm here. So first, we initialize all the means, m sub i, right? So when we have samples, then uh, let's say we want uh, three clusters, okay? Then uh, we need the three means, m1 and m2 and m3. And we just use random vectors here, here, Maybe here. So we can start from these initializations. Uh, maybe you might want a, a better initialization, like uh, something like this. But that's not an easy problem. Okay. So just let's use random initials. Okay. And sometimes these random initials are really awkward, but it's okay. And then second step is assignment. So if we have uh, random initials, like this one, two, and the three. And then we have to calculate the distance from this sample to three means. And in this case, this one is, is closest mean vector, then this one belongs to the first cluster. And we do the same thing with this sample. So when we calculate the distance, then this one is the closest. So this sample belongs to cluster one. So how about this one? When we calculate this one, then let's say this one is closest, then this one belongs to the second cluster. And this one is closest to, to this mean vector, so this one belongs to the third cluster, this one also third, third, third. Okay, so based on this, we can assign all the samples to clusters. So this says what I said here. So we calculate the distance between this sample to m sub i, and we calculate the, this sample to m sub j. So if this distance, so if this sample is closest to ith mean vector, closer than the other mean vectors, then xp belongs to ith cluster. Okay, so this is exactly what I said here. So now we have an assignment. I know this assignment is not perfect, okay, but we will update this assignment later after updating these mean vectors. So in the third step, we are going to update mean vector, okay. So based on this assignment from the second step, now we know which samples belong to which clusters. And we calculate the average 
and we update the min vector. So this is initial uh, vectors and we move these vectors. So probably this will move to this one, this will move to these ones. Okay, then we repeat these steps, two and three steps, until it converges. This is k-means algorithm. This slide shows one example. So based on the iterations, k-means algorithm converges to some point. So we start with uh, three initial centroids, like this k1, k2, k3. Okay. And we have lots of samples. These are samples. And first, we have to assign all the samples based on the distance. So this is assignment. Okay. So these green dots will belong to this one, uh, cl first cluster, and uh, these red ones belong to the second cluster, and the third one belong to the third cluster. And then, since we have assignment, then we can calculate the average of these samples. So the average of these green dots will be here. So we move this mean vector from here to here. And the average of these red dots will be around here so we move this mean vector from here to here and also uh, the average of this orange ones will be here so we update this vector to this okay and we just updated the mean vector and then we have to update the assignment again okay we ignore the assignment here so we recalculate the assignment this one was originally in the cl first cluster and now this one is, is closer to this one than this one. So this one belongs to the second cluster now. And this one belongs to the third cluster now. And then we recalculate the mean vector. So now uh, for the second cluster, so when we calculate the average, so this one is moving slightly. And this one is moving slightly because this one, the first cluster lost this point. So this one is moving slightly toward this direction. And this one also moves to this direction. And then eventually, finally, it will converge. So it is not changing the assignment. Okay, it is not changing the member of the cluster. Then we stop. Okay, so k-means is really simple in a sense, but it has some issues. Okay, as I said, initialization is important and the result depend on the initial means. So if the initialization is really terrible, then it converges to some weird clustering. Then distance function should be carefully chosen. You know, in, in machine learning, if you define the distance, actually you are defining the problem itself and the solution is, is really straightforward. Okay, and the Euclidean distance may not be the best. Okay, and then Sometimes metric cannot be defined. In that case, we cannot use k-means. So for example, uh, when we have a friends, then how can we make a clusters? Because we don't know how to define the similarity between the friends. And then the uh, k-means is not suitable for non-convex clusters, especially when we use Euclidean distance between the items. So for example, if we have a samples, like this, then we have a two clusters like this one and two. But if we use a Euclidean distance, then this one is close to this one, right? Rather than this one. So uh, in, in k-means, we might have two clusters like this. This is not what we want. This is the limit of k-means. So we're going to talk about some other clustering algorithms which can uh, make uh, nice clusters even for these non-convex problems. And the k-means is uh, sensitive to outliers because we calculate the average of the samples in each cluster. If we have outliers like this, then you know, it looks like we have, uh, we have two clusters here and here and this one is outlier but let's say if we have outlier around here then this one belongs to this cluster and then the average will be somewhere around here because of this outlier okay 
then the average of this cost is around here okay let me put some more then if you check this point this point is close to this one rather than this one right so this a mean vector of the first cluster is shifted because of this outlier then the clustering will be something like this so these these points will belong to the second cluster this is the problem of k-means because of this outlier and we can actually consider a soft assignment so this one belongs to the first cluster but the membership is not this strong compared to other uh, members so if we use the level of the membership then we can solve this kind of sensitive problem here and also uh, k midois is possible so instead of using means we can use one of actual points that's another kind of algorithm which is quite similar to k-means but slightly different and this is one example of k-means in this slide we we just apply uh, k-means to image segmentation but this is not just k-means application okay so we can apply any other clustering algorithms for image segmentations so we have uh, image like this since this one is a color image each pixel has a three-dimensional vector okay and then if this one is like if it is uh, 100 by 100 then we have 10,000 pixels so 10,000 samples okay and then we can apply the clustering algorithm and when we use just the two clusters you know uh, in in clusters if we have the centroid like this so instead of using all actual uh, pixels if we use uh, just the centroid here then it looks like this look at this one this pixel and this pixel this pixel belongs to the first cluster and this pixel belongs to the second cluster so this one is the centroid of the first cluster and this one is the centroid of the second cluster so if we use just two clusters then it looks like this and if we use uh, four clusters then it looks like this and if we increase the number of clusters then this will close to this original image so the more clusters the better reconstruction this is one example of image segmentation I'm not saying uh, this is how we do image segmentation. There are lots of better algorithms for image segmentations. This is a just a simple application of clustering to image segmentation.